Farm Bureau for the third consecutive year. All three head baseball coaches in the state of Mississippi have agreed to join us on Mondays. We start things off with Scott Barry from Southern Miss. And, uh, Coach, first of all, thanks for giving us the time each Monday during the season to, to kind of talk about the weekend and talk to us about your ball club. I know you got a lot going on, and we really appreciate you giving us some time. Uh, pleasure to do it, Richard. So it felt outside looking in like a heck of a baseball weekend in in Hattiesburg. Uh, a one run win on Friday, a one run win on Saturday. Obviously, you don't finish it out and, and get the sweep, but to get a series win against a quality team and a quality program like UConn, pretty good weekend all the way around. Is that your assessment? Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, we knew going in that UConn was going to be a quality club, one that's going to really uh, compete well. That was uh, from from everybody that I'd talked to that had played them last year in the American to to that area of the uh, region of the country. Uh, it was all the same thing, just a blue collar program that's going to come at you, punch you in the face, and and just tough northeastern kids, and that's exactly what they were. And they were three really, really uh, competitive ball games. Uh, nothing was taken for granted in, in any of them, in all honesty. Uh, both teams competed really well, and we were fortunate to come out with a series win with two of the three uh, uh, wins in those games. So let's start with Friday's game. Six runs, you actually get out hit in the ball game, but you came up with some clutch hits. You got two runs in the eighth inning that put you ahead. You were able to hold things off in the uh, in the ninth inning. Just kind of an overview from your perspective on that first game in the series on Friday? Well, you know, I think it started on the mound with, with Hunter Stanley. Uh, you know, his, his stat line didn't didn't reflect how well he really pitched. Honestly, Richard, he covered six and two-thirds, I think it was. Uh, gave up a few more hits than normal nine, but, you know, they kind of used a long ball, and the wind was really blowing out all three days at, at Pete Taylor Park. And I think he gave up three three home runs, but the key there, they were all solo home runs. So mm. there wasn't any crooked numbers. We were able to uh, keep the keep the score within reach uh, with, with our offense finally clicking uh, there in the eighth inning with Gabe Montenegro with a big double, bases loaded double that gave us the lead, then put us in a position to get Garrett Ramsey his first taste of Division One. Uh, baseball and, and certainly the young man he didn't he didn't disappoint he covered uh, struck out the side and uh, faced three batters and that was it ball game. I was going to ask you if you knew what you had in Garrett Ramsey because you not only get uh, the save from him on Friday but you get a save from him on Saturday as well. He works an inning on Friday and then what an inning and two thirds on Saturday. Did did you feel like you knew what you were going to get from Garrett Ramsey? Well, you know, Richard, in the fall, uh, we felt like that he had the best stuff of anybody on the staff. It was just a matter of getting him consistently from one outing to the other to, to come out and, and give us the outings we wanted. You know, he was, uh, we used him a bunch and prepared him for back-to-back uh, outings uh, back in the fall when we were when we were inter-squad. And, you know, he might have a good outing and then come out the next outing and, and not look so good. So the challenge was him for him to, to be consistently good and not ride that roller coaster of up and down and, and give us that balance. And, and certainly in his first two appearances, he's been able to achieve that. And so Garrett's story, right, he's a, a, a local central Mississippi guy out of Brandon, goes the community college route first at Hines and then co- comes to you? That's correct. Northwest Rankin. Played at Northwest Rankin, then went to Hines, and then came came to us this year. That's correct. Gotcha. When you look at building a roster, how much of it, because you've had so many high school kids, and especially from there out of the Pine Belt that have been big contributors for, uh, contributors for you, but you also, uh, maybe because your background, as much as anything, have been able to pull guys from the junior college ranks that have been big contributors as well. What What's your philosophy, Scott, in, in building your roster? Well, I think it's just having a balance there of, of what you need in, in your position players and your pitchers. You know, you certainly don't want to be too old and you don't want to be too young. Uh, you know, right now, this team – what I seem to be running out there each day is position player wise. We have three freshmen, five sophomores, and one junior. We've only got three seniors on our team, and that's all three of those are our pitchers: Stanley, Powell, and uh, Tweedy. So everybody else is basically uh, junior and down. So 
you know, I think we're probably a little younger than what we want to be this year uh, than, than years past. But, you know, the prior years, Richard, honestly, we were kind of older guys. You know, we were that junior, senior with, uh, you know, losing some juniors to the draft that kind of left that void there that you can't really prepare for and you, you don't have a crystal ball to see. But, uh, you know, certainly if, if it's a junior college kid that we need that uh, that older player to come in and, and, and be that in our place, then we're going to go after him. If, if we feel like the development side, we need to develop this kid because we already have this shortstop that, that's a sophomore, then we'll go after we'll go after that high school kid. Another junior college kid that play, pays dividends this weekend is, uh, is Christopher Sargent, who comes from coastal Alabama after a couple of seasons there. Uh, I guess it was Saturday where he had the uh, the monster game where he drives in five runs, went two for four. Tell me a little bit more about Christopher Sargent. Sarge was a guy that really gave us right-handed power in the fall, uh, which, which we needed, a middle-of-the-lineup kind of guy. Uh, you know, he showed that in the fall. He was a really tough out. Was kind of slow to get out the gate this spring. Uh, I think he may be oppressing a little bit, uh, but looked like this weekend he kind of returned to the to the uh, the way he was this fall. He took some good swings. He wasn't chasing out of the zone like he was earlier in the year. I think it was just a matter of probably pressing, uh, being in this environment because it was a great environment this weekend. Our fans were what was uh, at, at limited capacity was uh was really maximum for that capacity in all honesty so uh it was a great atmosphere and sometimes these kids <clears throat> excuse me get a little sped up and their adrenaline gets to flowing and they they kind of tend to do some things they wouldn't normally do but i think after time you start to relax and you understand the the atmosphere and you get acclimated to it and i think that's what is kind of starting to happen with him Scott Barry, head baseball coach at Southern Miss, joining us on the Farm Bureau phone line. Um, you, you mentioned the atmosphere. Did did it feel as normal as it can in the ballpark this weekend? I'll tell you what, it was it was a lot of noise, uh, and uh, you know I think we fed off from it. I I heard an interview from uh, UConn's coach uh, there when he left, and he felt like you know that maybe his kids were affected by by the crowd a little bit. Uh, you know, they were very impressed with the venue and the atmosphere and absolutely loved it. And, you know, said this is, you know, as close to a regional atmosphere as, as you can get, not in a regional. So, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we tend to do that in the state of Mississippi at all, all three of our big schools. So very proud of that. And, uh, uh, but, but yeah, uh, it was, it was a great atmosphere. I don't know if this question is easy to answer at this point, just seven games into the season, but uh, have you learned anything about your ball club that maybe you, you didn't necessarily know two weeks ago? Well, you know, uh, outside we've lost three games. We're four and three, and the three games that we lost, uh, the first loss, which was the second game of the doubleheader against Northwestern, uh, you know, we fell behind, and I really honestly just did not feel like we had a pulse that was trying to get us back in it, and uh, hmm. which was very disappointing. Uh, from that fact, uh, you know, of course, everybody always talks about how hard it is to to win a doubleheader and all that. Of course, I try to preach exactly just the opposite. It's a game by game uh, situation, and but we didn't do well in that game. But the other two losses, the one at South Alabama last Tuesday. We were in it right to the end. gave ourselves gave ourselves an opportunity. Just came up short. And then yesterday, uh, we were right in it to the end. We just ran out of outs. But you know, one thing this young team has been able to do, Richard, and, and that's really stay with it and and not not give in and try to win this thing all the way to the last out. And then, Coach, finally, got a fun one coming up on Wednesday. You're going to play Mississippi State in Pearl. Game got pushed back a day from Tuesday to uh, Wednesday. Always uh, a cool environment when uh, when you can play against Mississippi State or you play against Ole Miss. That's not going to happen this year. But your team excited about that one? I think so. You know, I had, we're, we're practicing right now. I came up to the office to talk with you. But, uh, yeah, I think it's business as usual. For us, you know, I don't, I don't, I've always been this way. I don't want us to ride a high or ride a low depending on who the opponent is. I want us to understand how important the game is. And the game has to have an opponent to play it. And uh, so, whether, you know, <laughs> if you're playing it because of who the guy is on the other side on their chest, then you're probably playing it for the wrong reason. And I just think that's just a mature way 
that you have to look at, at playing a baseball game. And, and when you preach being even keel and, and never too high, never too low, then certainly that's the way you have to look at competition. Is It is competition, and your, your job is to go out there and win the game no matter who it is. But it is nice that there isn't politics that, it, uh, that that comes into baseball and keeping different sports from playing. In all honesty, it's uh, you know I think baseball is a fraternity that that respects one another and and appreciates what each other does and and certainly invites the competition. Should be fun on Wednesday night. Congratulations on the series win, Coach. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you next Monday. Thank you, Richard. That's Scott Perry, head baseball coach, headed back to practice now, kind to give us a few minutes of his time today. Southern Miss wins two this weekend against UConn. We'll be back. This is com. Chris Lamonis joins us right now, head baseball coach at Mississippi State. Coach, I don't know the last time you had a uh, like a heart evaluation, but I can't imagine that weekends like this are great for the heart. What a weekend of baseball in Starkville. Well, it feels like the start of the season's been that way, but it was a great weekend, and our kids showed a lot of fight. And it was, uh, you know, it's amazing how much better you feel today after just, you know, one more hit at the end of the day instead of not getting that hit. But it's a, uh, it was a fun weekend against a very talented Tulane team, and, and we we're fortunate to, to to win the series. What did it feel like in the ballpark? We've obviously got some re- attendance restrictions in, in place, but did it feel close to normal? Obviously not as many people, but in terms of an, kind of from an energy standpoint? Well, it does. In, in our situation, we've been empty, you know, since last spring. So all fall, all summer, all spring training. So um, the fans that were there, they were loud, and uh, we heard some cowbells, and it's, it's not, you know, obviously Stanford Super Regional, but it was a very, very good crowd for our park, a very loud crowd for as many people as we had in there. Hopefully we'll get more in there here in the future. Hey, Coach, Brian Haydad here. You know, your team, you're getting wins, but I think you would agree with me that you haven't had your rotation in place yet and you're having some issues out in the field. How does it feel when, you know, what's the mentality of the team to win when they're not playing at their best? Well, I thought this weekend um, – You know, we have probably played, and I've told our coaches this this morning, I don't know if anybody's faced the arms that we have faced to this point of the year. Nobody in the entire country. Um, So from the offensive standpoint, I mean, we have faced three dudes who were preseason first-team All-American. And we had another guy who came out of the Bulls. Texas threw their one and two against us. So the offensive side I get. Um, we we got to play better defensively, and we got to get some of these pieces with our bullpen. We knew it was going to take a while for our pitching. Even though we're very talented, we have numbers, and we need to see who can run out there and do it in the game. I think the defensive piece is the biggest one for us right now. We have to we have to clean that up, and uh, I feel like we will clean that up. And then, you know, for us to be able to go out there and play really good baseball, a chance to make a run and, and do some special things. But uh, it does feel good that you can win and not play your best baseball. Um, here early in the year. Chris Lamonis visiting with us, head baseball coach at Mississippi State. Coach, I'm not the biggest math guy. Seven and two-thirds, I think that's a possible 23 outs. And Landon Sims has got 20 strikeouts out of the possible 23 outs. I, I, I know he's human and gave up an, unear- or a, an earned run this weekend. Did you see this coming from him? Well, he has been as good as we have on our staff all year. He just... I called him our X Factor early for the fact that he has the ability to come in the games and I put him in. He laughed this weekend. I brought him in runner at first. He said, this is a lot better than last week when I brought him in. (laughs) No outs. That was our conversation on the mound. So he just has that ability. Some kids have a harder time being a reliever. He can do it all. I mean, he could close. He could be long. He he could start for us. I mean, we're, you know, we're in all these different worlds. He can just do so many different things. He's just a, he's a great athlete. He's a great competitor. So, and the stuff is really good. I mean, it just he just goes at you. And right now, that's that's a really important thing for us because you know, with a lot of our new guys out there, everybody seems to be nibbling a little bit. We could be a little bit better at pounding the strike zone. And when Landon does it, it makes it easier for everybody else. I've never really thought about that. So when you make a pitching change and you bring a new guy in, what's the conversation with the guy that comes from the bullpen? Is it strategy? Do you try to keep it light? It's, what is it's that? Usually situation. Right, it's just hey, you got a green runner at first. You got one out. You're at the seven hole lineup. You know, I'm usually minimize the inning. Just get us out of it. 
without them having too much damage. But, you know, some kids come in, you're trying to make them laugh or, you know, or some kids you're trying to get them to calm down because some of them can be, you know, Cole Gordon, he ran out there like a bull every time it felt like, you know. So you have different mentalities of guys that come out there. And so usually the, the most important talk is when Scott Foxhall walks out there and he's trying to calm that guy down. He did it to Landon. He had to walk out, and we felt like their three- and four-hole hitters didn't handle velocity. And we were about to make the switch from Landon to Houston Harding, and we needed two more outs. And uh, he walked down there, you know, just gave him a breather, talked to, you know, more – the pitching stuff, and then boom, he he hammers it in there. So usually, I'm talking to the infielders, hand the ball, let the guy know the situation. But Fox is the one who goes out and really, you know, helps that pitcher, you know, calm down a little bit and get out of the inning. Well, speaking of pitching, coach, you know, big game with USM on Wednesday. You got moved back a day, so you have an extra day of rest. Do you have an idea of who your starter is going to be for that one, or what's your plan for that game down in Pearl? Yeah, we're going to start Houston Harding, left-handed pitcher. He threw a little bit this weekend. Uh, he's pitched really well for us at this point and had a really good spring training. So we, we're going to run him out there. But he'll probably, you know, midweek games, you'll probably see a handful of arms. <laughs> Chris, what do you know about your team that you didn't know two weeks ago? Well, you know, we talked after we lost that Friday night game this week and, and just, you know, man, we're going to find out a lot about who we are over these next 48 hours and I knew we were a tough ball club we have so many kids who are you know so tough minded um so man we we learned a lot this weekend just learning how to fight and compete because man it was a it was a pretty lively atmosphere too that we were dealing with um I think we're starting to figure out some roles and who's you know I'm figuring out lineup I know we're figuring out some bullpen pieces I mean we have a lot of new guys and even our guys that we had back I mean Logan Tanner's played 10 college games and everybody, you know, we're he's the four-hole hitter and everything else. and should be doing great. Like, the reality is we just have a lot of young kids. And uh, we do have some older ones, too. And they're the ones that seem to be helping us really win games. But these younger ones getting their feet wet. So we're still, like, I, I think figuring out the pieces. Lineup was, I like Scotty DeBrule the first couple of days. I had him in the six-hole, and I felt like he played a lot better in the two-hole. Um, you know, had two big walks in those innings that we came back and scored late. So, um, I think some of those pieces are what we're trying to figure out and find out. A lot of people have used the the word or the phrase "chippy" to uh, to describe this weekend. It was obviously emotional. What what's the? I, I don't know. What what did you think about the the weekend? Kind of with the back and forth between the teams. Do you like the energy that comes from that? Is is it? Do you, do you worry about that? Well, you know, it was funny on uh, on Friday night. You know, it was real chippy. We're usually not that way. Now, we'll cheer and yell for our guys, but for some reason we were really quiet on Friday night. And um, the they get the guy comes out, and he, they're yelling, and he gets all – and he kind of gets our guys excited, and the umpire gives us the warning on both sides. I walked out the umpire and said, what, what was that for? I said, man, we've been dead all night long. This guy's pitching so good, man. I, my dugout's the quietest dugout ever, and – you know, and after that game, our guys, I, I, you know, not challenge them to be chirpy, but just to match the energy to be into the game, to be cheering our guys on. And I'm not a big fan of cheering on dugouts, but I thought our guys did a great job after that. It just, it was, it was a boxing match. I mean, it was, they would score, we would score, they would score. I mean, you no, know, neither team felt comfortable all weekend. You know, I mean, even in the first game, we, we lost, but we, when we put a little bit of a run together in the ninth inning of that game which I think helps you out on Sunday because we we ended up beating that guy on Sunday and we, we everybody pretty much had an at bat against him. So it was a it was a long weekend. My ears were hurting, I can tell you that. Yeah, I can imagine two weekends in a row where the atmosphere has felt big and the games have felt important. Is that a function of the opponent or is it because we've been so long without baseball and guys are so glad to be back at the park and and for whatever reason it feels like the stakes are raised? I think it's more the competition level and the venues. Okay. I mean, we you know we opened that first weekend. There were so many people at that first tournament. Professional baseball fans. I mean, in Texas, it they, we had so many fans, and our fans made it. But it's just every you know our fans would stay and watch all three games of the day, like Ole Misses or Texas Techs or whoever. They just wanted baseball, so you were in these big environments and playing great teams. And we all understand that you know for us as the SEC to go to that tournament and. and do really well against the Big 12, I would like to think that's going to help us at the end of the year. Our whole league, it'll help us. And so, um, you know, and this weekend was the same way. I mean, this is a 
a regional ball club we were playing and and who knows what postseason baseball is going to be like so i think the stakes are raised a little bit because of the level of competition that teams were playing here early we've just we probably this is probably one of the harder starts I've ever had as a coach of just jumping out and playing upper level competition right off the bat. Well, good start from a win loss standpoint, and uh, the polls reflected as well. Congratulations on a great weekend, and thanks so much for your time this afternoon. No problem, guys. Y'all have a good one. Take care. You as well. That's Chris Lamonis, head baseball coach at Mississippi State, visiting with us on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com. And go with the home team, Mississippi Farm Bureau. So we talked with uh, with Scott Barry at 20 minutes after three today. Chris Lamonis uh, just finished up a conversation with him. Mike Bianco will join us in the five o'clock hour as well as we cra- uh, recap what was a uh, a big weekend at Mississippi State. Interesting to hear what he said. Kind of challenged his team a little bit after kind of being quiet on Friday and. Um, so Ole Miss head baseball coach Mike Bianco joins us as he does on Mondays during the season. And, Coach, like I said to uh, both Scott Berry and Chris Lamonis, really appreciate you spending some time with us each Monday during the year. Uh, with the day now to think about it, kind of your your big picture thoughts on the uh, on the weekend against UCF at home. Well, you know, uh, and you saw, you know, Rich, I think all three games. It just, you know, three really close games and three games where, you know, obviously you saw how talented they are. I mean, how well they pitched it, how well they caught it in the infield. And, and offensively, um, you know, they, they, they're, they're good. They got some guys in the middle that can really swing it. And, uh, you know, almost the opposite of the first weekend where, uh, you know, I thought, you know, uh, down in Texas, we, we made all the big pitches. Uh, you know, we, we had, you know, several big, you know, key hits at the, at critical times of the game. You know, I thought it was the opposite this weekend. You know, they seem to make the big pitches and, uh, get all the critical hits. And so disappointing. I mean, there's obviously areas for us to improve on. Uh, we got to be better, you know, than we were in the bullpen, almost reverse of that, where the first four games, we were just like out, gave up one run, you know, this weekend. Our bullpen didn't fare as well, and you know we gave up, uh, I believe, uh, ten runs, you know, over the the eight innings of relief. So uh, uh, just you know, not a good weekend for us. One of the areas that you've shined so far is in the field defensively. Only three errors through seven games, and I think two of those three errors are on pitchers making making throws. Did you anticipate that this team was going to be as clean defensively as they've been so far? No, I mean, I liked our defense. Uh, I don't know if you ever forecast you're going to have three errors, you know, through the first you know, seven games. And no, I think we've been spectacular defensively. And, you know, that's been a huge bright bright spot, you know, through the entire seven games. I mean, we've we got a lot to be proud of and a lot to, to, to say that we, you know, uh, some areas that we've, we've played pretty well in from – Game to game, but collectively through the the seven inning or seven games, I would think you know defense has been the number one key, and and and, and really you know not just not making errors, but making some game changing plays. I thought you know Justin Bench was terrific all over the field this past weekend in center and at second base, and of course Jacob continues to play really well. I thought Tim Elko uh, he made the other error that you're talking about on a on a on a bunt play, but besides that, he's been outstanding at third as well. Is the measure of a good shortstop defensively one that makes difficult plays, but but plays that you're supposed to make look effortless, or is it when you can just go out and make that spectacular play? And, and I guess I ask that because it it looks pretty effortless for Jacob Gonzalez on just about everything that comes his way. Well, he's got really good hands. He's got a good arm, very accurate arm, and. You know, I think if you ask a bunch of coaches that, I mean, everybody loves the whip jam and the sports center top 10 plays. I mean, those are kind of neat and, you know, you just sit there and all sometimes. But the truth of the matter is, uh, what wins you games is the guy that's going to make the routine play. He's going to catch all the balls and throw them over to first base. And, uh, you, you need that. The, the shortstop gets, you know, gets his hands and touches more balls than anybody, you know, in the field. And so that's the guy that you need that's going to make all the plays. And, and we, think he's that kind of guy you mentioned justin bench coming in from center and playing second today i guess you played three different guys at second base over the course of the the weekend in the absence of peyton shot any kind of an update you can give uh in terms of timeline or what you expected with a, a return for shot after the hamstring injury 
Well, I think he's you know, certainly out for another week, you know, so he'll miss uh, these two games in the middle of the week and he'll miss this weekend's games uh, and we'll have to reevaluate. He's getting better uh, and he's able to do more, but as we've spoken before, you know, Richard, that the hamstring is a really, you know, it's a touchy thing and you got to be careful that you don't push him back too quickly and, uh, you obviously can see it's a big blow, you know, to our offense. And I think just our team, he's a great leader. He's a kid that plays with a ton of energy and a ton of confidence. And, you know, to our offense, you know, just, a, I think, a big part, you know, uh, at the top of the lineup for us. But, uh, well, we're still going to have to wait another week at least, you know, until uh, we see him. Mike Bianco, head baseball coach at Ole Miss, visiting with us. This is Sports Talk Mississippi. What about your starting pitching this weekend? When when you go back and you think about the outings of Nikhazy and Hoagland and, and Diamond, how do you grade those guys based on what they did this weekend? Yeah, I thought they were outstanding. You know, uh, uh, you know, you look back to the Friday night. You know, Doug ends up giving up, you know, two home runs. I think in the seventh inning. Uh, mm-hmm. Up until that point, uh, you know, he had a shutout going. So, uh, you know, he pitched like the Friday night ace that we know he, he, he can be. And you know, and even though he ends up getting the loss, uh, you know, I really thought he was, you know, he was lights out. I thought Gunner. Uh, you know, pitches, you know, through the, through the seventh, gets it to the eighth inning and, uh, with the lead, uh, and we end up blowing it in the eighth. And then, of course, Derek, uh, although he gave up four runs and a bunch of hits, I think he, sh- he showed some, some toughness and just being able to weather the storm. Uh, you know, you, you get a guy that gives you, I think, six or six and a third, uh, you know, on, on Sunday, gives up four runs, not his best game, but against a really good offense. It gives you a chance to win. But again, the bullpen failed us. We gave up three runs, you know, after that. They allowed them to extend the lead. But I, you know, I was really happy with the starters this weekend. Mike, opening weekend, you, you came up with some timely hits, but didn't necessarily just like rack up the hits. And, and then this weekend, maybe a, a little bit of the same, but not as many timely hits as you wanted. You were really high on this offense coming in when we talked just a couple of weeks ago. Do you think they're kind of on the verge of breaking out offensively, or is there something you see that you feel like specifically you've got to work on? Well, I think the thing that we got to work on is we got to continue to try to put the the at bats together. I, I thought this weekend was a poor weekend, not necessarily because of the amount of hits, because I think you can look. You know, everybody tends to look at the batting average, but but you know it's. Yeah, you know, the first weekend I was excited because, you know, even though we faced some really good pitchers, we, we, we had our moments where we were really good and we were able to put an inning together. And, and people, I, I don't know if they understand when you say put some of the bats together, you know, be able to put a, a chain of bat, you know, so what you're talking about is where you have four or five good at bats where it may be a walk. You know, even though it may be an out, but it, but what it was, you know, you saw a lot of pitches or you moved the runner where you put, you know, four or five really good productive at bats together. And usually when we talk about a quality at bat, if you can put a chain together of three or four, you know, good at bats, you're, you're, even though they may not all be hits, some of them may be outs, you're going to score runs. And, you know, that's what we talk about is putting these quad chains together. And uh, this weekend we didn't do it. And so, you know, there wasn't very many opportunities uh, for the for the timely hit just because we didn't have a lot of base runners. I mean, it was, you know, we'd have a good at bat and several poor at bats in a row, and then a good at bat and several full poor at bats. And we gotta we gotta be a little tougher. I thought against a really good uh, starting three pitching, uh, we we didn't do a very good job of you know making it tough on them because what happens a lot of times if you make it tough on the you know the the opponent's starter you're going to be able to raise his pitch count get him out of the game sooner and that's probably the most disappointing thing for the weekend so i i don't i don't work maybe mentally on the uh, the, the answer to your question on the verge and that type of stuff we just got to do a better job i think collectively as an offense put more pressure on the you know, the opponent's pitchers and during that time of the year where you play a bunch of games in a short amount of time, Tuesday, Wednesday this week against Memphis and Jackson State before you host Belmont, what's your uh, what's your pitching plan middle of the week on these uh, these next couple of games? You know, we still haven't made a decision on Wednesday. We're going to go Drew McDaniel tomorrow and just let him go, uh, then go to the bullpen, you know, after that and see what we use out of the bullpen to decide where we'll go on Wednesday. But, uh, you know, I, I think – you know, it's it's just one of those where uh, Jackson Kimbrell is a possible you know guy that we could start on Wednesday. Uh, so is you know Tyler Myers. 
you know, Cody Adcox, another guy that I think's got a, a chance to maybe be one of those midweek starters for us eventually. But I think, you know, what we want to do is just first get through that first game and, and see where we are as far as bullpen pieces because one of those guys in the bullpen is going to start on Wednesday. Sounds good. Coach, really appreciate your time this afternoon. Good visiting with you. We'll talk to you next week. My pleasure, Richard. Thank you. That's Mike Bianco, head baseball coach at Ole Miss, visiting with us. So he said uh, going to go with Drew McDaniel on the uh, the Tuesday afternoon game against Memphis. McDaniel is 1-0 and on the year. It'll be his third appearance of the season and second start. He started against Arkansas State last week. He is 1-0 uh, and with a 1.69 ERA.